look at its git clone repository dialog, streamlines cloning from GitHub or any other repository, and then immediately using the clone code in slick edit. It runs the git clone operation in a separate process, so if you close slick edit before it finishes, that won't be a problem. To get started, just go to version control, clone. The first thing we see is the repository location. There's a paste button you can use if you have the repository location copied to the clipboard. GitHub has a copy to clipboard button for the repository location, so this is very convenient. There's also a history retrieval combo box that would let you choose from any of the repositories you've used in the past. Next is the option to create the directory name from the repository name. If you use this option, the last portion of the repository name will be appended to the location. The .git will only be appended for a bare clone. Here is a checkbox to be notified when the clone is done. This means that when the clone is finished, we'll be presented with options about what we want to do with our new clone. There are other common options to pass to git clone, including not using hard links, using a bare clone, setting up a mirror, verbose output, specifying a branch, checking out a single branch, and two different shallow options, only cloning a certain number of commits and only cloning commits since a specified date. We're going to click OK and wait for our repository to clone. Here's the notification dialog. You can see it prompts us if we would like to create a new workspace in the new clone, open an existing workspace in the new clone, check out a branch in the new clone, or add a work tree from the clone, or do nothing at this time. We're going to choose to create a new workspace. We're going to use the GNU C, C++ wizard and choose all of the defaults. Slickit is already tagging the workspace in the background, and we can get right to work. Download your free trial today. Go to www.slickitit.com slash trial.